Hi, it's Brent from Pudgy Trumpets, and I'm back with another product review. Today we have two special guests. Both of them are the Shorty. Now this is the last of this model. It was kind of a prototype and an approach that used what I call my universal port, which I'm able to use on any horn, including my mod. But I decided since most of my horns point straight forward, like a standard trumpet, that I would just switch back to that. So these are still custom valves made to my specifications by Getson, just like this one is. But I went back to a more traditional look here. I don't know if you can see that. The difference being that this pushes it out there. You can see the brace, how far that brace is versus how far that brace is. Now those are both custom braces that I made for there. This one's copper and I'm just going to go back to that model. But because this one's assembled, has the pistons in it, the other one just got done with ceramic coating this morning and is still uh, curing, so I can't assemble that one. Let's just go over the features of the Pudgy uh, Shorty. It's got a seamless copper bell. I call it seamless because it's electroplated. Con did this back in the day with their Coprion bells. It's a mandrel that's submerged in a solution and the copper is attracted to the mandrel. And when the desired thickness is achieved, they pull it out and pull it off the mandrel. And then it needs to be annealed and spun on a lathe and have the bead put in it. And the same thing that you would do once you uh, do a hand hammered bell or a two piece bell. But it's a seamless bell. And that's what I call it. I call them seamless. You could call it a plated bell. Some, some people call it a single piece bell or a one piece bell, but that's not true. A uh, single piece or one piece is from a single sheet, single one piece of copper rather than a two piece bell. And then there's a seam in that. And that's on my, the Pudgy version four has a one piece copper bell, hand hammered. Whereas this is plated. Now it has a number two lead pipe in gold brass, which is my open and diffused. On this model, you can get a two plus, which would be a little more open. It also has my custom receiver on it, done in house, designed to mate exactly with my mouthpieces. But since I only do V mouthpieces, a deep V and a mid V for right now, the deep V being flugel, and the mid V being more of a cornet. Uh, anybody's mouthpiece will fit in there. And I don't plan on doing any C cups because they're plentiful out there. A lot of companies making C cup mouthpieces. So choose your favorite and it'll know that it'll fit in this receiver. It'll just cover up more of the shank, which to me translates in a better transfer of energy. The brace is a three piece brace, which it reduces the tension in the horn when it's being assembled. It can expand a little bit. If I were to use a one piece brace there, like a Z brace, uh, you have to get everything lined up. And even if there's no tension, just the heating and the solder and everything puts tension in there. And there's nowhere for it to expand unless it pulls away from either the bell or the receiver. This rod can kind of move slightly in and out of these um, sockets. And so after I have assembled the horn and everything's nice, I'll take my torch and I'll move it back and forth over this and it'll release any tension that's in there. And you can actually kind of hear it pop sometimes as there is a little tension and I, I don't cram these together. I don't use a big clamp here. I just put tiny little clamps on the flanges and I let it float. But even doing that, there's tension. So after, after it's all assembled, I'll come back with my torch and I'll just kind of heat it up right here and listen for the little pop if there is one and then I know that the tension's been released here. I just use standard braces here to save money. I can make braces like this in house but these are made by a machine and are super affordable. If I do that I don't have to have extra employees, I don't have to charge extra money. Just has standard rings is the configuration. This is how if you just order a shorty it will come like this. If you want a pinky hook thumb saddle, that's available. No extra charge. But they're all just made by the factory. If you want something custom, you can put on my custom copper pudgy rings. And that's an upcharge, but those are 
super nice. They feel great in your hands. They're nice and easy to hold. They're fat. They look great with the copper bell. Uh, this is a tall block. As I said, custom made to my specifications by Getson. Two piece nickel upper, nickel balusters. Extra long body here. More space for your hand to hold, not feeling crunched and cramped. I have large hands, not, not big fingers, but large hands. And it's always a challenge for me to slip my hand into a trumpet and not feel cramped up and be able to move the third uh, slide easily. It has a modern trim on it. That's my preference for this horn. If you really want knurled trim, I can do that. But I like these with the heavy caps. I think it's part of the sound of the shorty. Shorty's super balanced. Everything's right in the middle. So the extra weight here just adds to the core of the sound without fatiguing you. You can hold this really easily. It doesn't want to tilt forward or backwards. It just rests right where it is. Inlays are optional on this. I have a variety of stones you can set in. These are blue copper turquoise shell. I think I have a different name on my website, but you get the idea. It's a mix of shell and turquoise and copper. And the shell is dyed blue to kind of match the turquoise, but there is real bits of turquoise mixed in there too. Water keys, double water key. Easy to empty with one pinch. These are Lee's keys made by Hoxon Gaki. They're my favorite Amato style key because they just unscrew. No tools required. You could do this without any tools, take it all apart on the fly while you're at a gig. Something gets stuck in there, your water key doesn't work, it's stuck open. You can take it apart quickly, no tools. Get a drop of oil in there, put it back together. Sorry about that, my battery was dying. Uh, no water key on the third slide. Got a dump for easy, quick emptying. Nickel, you saw, has nickel inners and outers for uh, longevity. They wear a little bit better than the brass. They're, they're harder and uh, less prone to corrosion. And the bell, talked about the bell already, but it's a standard four and three quarter inch uh, bell. The finish on this is a new finish I've been working on. I haven't exactly called up come up with a name for it. I was looking at uh, Jaspe, and you can look up what that means online. But I was thinking of calling it that, because nobody really knows what that means anyway. So I can make it look whatever I want. But this is a copy of one of my most requested finishes that I was completely unable to duplicate, so I came up with a new process. Tried it out on these two horns, and as you can see, they're similar, but everyone's going to be different. So antique finishes, Patinas like that, I can never reproduce exactly. So if you say, I want that exact one, not possible. Similar style. And I'm working on ceramic coatings. You can see how shiny these are. They're actually very, very slippery. And with these gloves on, I'm careful not to drop it. It's a very, very smooth surface, but it's only about the same thickness as you would have with silver plating, not a lacquer finish. But we're checking out the durability. I'm on my third product now, and I'm hoping that uh, this seems to be the best so far. Right now, there's no charge for ceramic coating. There's no charge for patinas. But as I perfect these things, uh, there will be an additional charge. They do, they do take extra time. But for now, I'm just passing that along to you. As I explore it, you can explore it with me. And that should do it for the pudgy. The pudgy shorty, that is. And... One fast thing here, that's the main tuning slide down here. Kind of a vintage retro look, but meets modern with the trim and the inlays. It's, I think that's why it's got a lot of appeal. It's sort of best of the both worlds. A throwback to a vintage time when cornets were wrapped up funny and everyone was doing something like this. I mean, I have no claim to a shape like this. I'm sure someone's done it, especially if you look in the con catalog, if you ever think that you've discovered something new about trumpets, just take a look at what Khan's done. They probably did it about a hundred years ago already. Anyway, I hope you learned something about the shorty. I will say that these are limited edition to some degree, 
in that I only have about six of these bells left. I bought them from someone who was uh, closing them out. I do know where the mandrel is. I do know who makes the blanks, the copper plated blanks. So I'm hoping that I will someday be able to, to have them made for me rather than buying them from somebody else who was not using them anymore. But in case they, that isn't the case, I'll have to come up with a different bell. So there's about six of these left. And it's one of my stock models, the shorty. Hope you learned something. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.